So uh, I have to be honest. I, a couple years ago, I was so glad when our kids started going to school. They started attending Liberty Christian Academy. Before that, they were homeschooled, and nothing wrong with homeschool. That was a, a wonderful experience, but I was glad when they went off to school. Uh, and it was during COVID, and I was working in the house, right? I had to work from home. My kids were having school at home, and the noise was driving me crazy, and I was getting grumpy. I'm just being real here this morning. I was getting grumpy, and I was being impatient. And all of a sudden, Andrea comes up to me one day, and she says, Jeremy, I found this awesome thing. It's for $10 a month. You can go to Panera Bread and get unlimited drinks. You can get unlimited coffee, tea, and water. And I was like, I think she's pushing me out of the house. She's like, get out of here. No, she didn't say that. But in a way, she was like, yeah, there's this thing at Panera. You should try working there. And so I did. But, but I was really glad when the kids started uh, going to Liberty because they had to get into this habit of, getting up, you know, setting an alarm, getting up when the alarm goes off, get yourself ready and, and go off to school. And, and I wanted them to get in that habit because someday, you know, when they move out, when they move out, and someday when they get a job, when they get a job and they move out, they're going to have to be in the habit of doing these things, right? Set alarm, get up, get yourself ready and go off to work. That's the way the world works. And so I wanted them to get into that habit. Uh, I remember my, my oldest son, Eric, used to get himself up when he was eight years old. He would set his own alarm. He would wake himself up. He would get himself ready and get himself on the bus by himself with no help from me. I got kids now who are older than eight. I'm not going to mention their names, but they still don't get up every time their alarm goes off. But uh, maybe, hopefully they'll get into that habit. Um, so uh, last week we, we looked at how to get good habits started. Right. This week is going to be how can we get rid of bad habits? And I don't know about you, but I have struggled over the years with some bad habits. And it's like, man, these things are pesky. Like, like how how why is it so hard to break bad habits? And do you wish that you could finally have breakthrough with this, you know, with breaking some bad habit? Would you like some practical steps that you can take to help you this morning break bad habits? So in this message, we're going to cover why bad habits are so hard to break and what are the things we can do to help break those. So our question today is this. Based on who you want to become, what's one bad habit you need to break? Okay, based on who you want to become, what's one bad habit? Just think think about it for a minute. Give yourself a second to think. What is that habit that's been maybe haunting you for years, that one thing that you've tried to put down many, many times or stop doing and just keeps seeming to find its way back, right? Based on who you want to become, what's one habit that you need to break? All right, so in James 1, 21, and I love how the Good News translation uh, says this in James 1, 21, it says, so get rid of every filthy habit and all wicked conduct. Submit to God and accept the word that he plants in your hearts, which is able to save you. And so what did God say in the scriptures? He said, get rid of every filthy habit, right? Get it out of there. Don't even entertain it. Don't tolerate it. Get rid of it. Don't don't just say, well, this is just the way I am, right? But no, get rid of every filthy habit and all the wicked conduct. And how do we do this? Well, we don't do it on our own. It's not under our own power. What did it say? Submit to God and his power, right? We submit to his authority, to his word, to his presence, to his power. And, and, and we submit to God and accept the word that he plants in our hearts, which is able to save us, which is able to transform us, right? Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, And so what are we doing this morning? We're getting rid of bad habits. Everybody say, I'm getting rid of bad habits. habits. That sounded like you meant it too. Good job. And if you're watching online, just type that in there. I'm getting rid of bad habits today. All right. We're going to have victory in Jesus name. All right. Uh, And I want you to be specific as you think about this bad habit. I want you to be specific. It's very important that we define the bad habit that we want to get rid of because why you cannot defeat what you do not define. Ooh, that's good. Somebody should write that down. 
right? You should take notes. This is definitely a day to take notes. We leave a space here. This is a note-taking day, man. You want to write this stuff down. You cannot defeat what you do not define. And so we got to define it. What is the habit you want to break? And based on a lot of people I talk to, there are some common ones that you might want to address. Like some people say they're diets, right? Well, I want to I want to cut out sweets. I want to cut out sweets. I don't want to do that anymore. That's very specific. That's good, right? Uh, some of you may say, I want to cut out carbs, okay? Some of you are saying, no more fast food, all right? Those are all good. Those are specific, uh, related to uh, weight loss or healthy habits, whatever. Uh, for you, it might be digital instead, right? Like, you, maybe you're sitting there saying, I don't want to play video games for my whole entire life. I mean, maybe you do, but your spouse or your future spouse doesn't want you playing video <laughs> games all the time, and so you might want to listen to that. Uh, but... <laughs> um, Maybe you want to limit your time on social media, right? Maybe you find yourselves, like, if you're just being honest, you're like, man, I'm going to this thing, like, way too often. In fact, it's, like, bordering on addiction, right? I mean, just be real with yourself. Maybe it is. Maybe you want to limit your time. Um, you, you realize that it, it's, you know, your life is too valuable and your calling is too great to waste your life on things that don't last, uh, or you might have an addiction to porn, and you need to get that out of your life. It's, it's ruining you. It's poisoning you. It's hurting your relationships. Uh, it, it may be substance issues in your life, right? That there's some substance that has taken over your life. There's, maybe it's, it's prescription pain medicines, or maybe it's uh, alcohol or some kind of drug. Uh, you, you've tried to quit smoking, and you can't get that. Uh, maybe it's some substance, uh, alcohol or something. And, and listen, if more than one person has brought this up to you that cares about you, that says, hey, this might be an issue in your life, you'd be wise to pay attention to that, okay? Uh, some of you may think, oh, I don't have a problem, but if more than one person has brought this up, it may be an issue. It may be something that's not as visible on the outside, but it is very real on the inside, right? It might be a, an attitude, an unhealthy attitude. Um, you got some habitual attitudes that are robbing you from the life and joy that God wants to give you. Maybe you have a critical spirit, right? Like maybe some of you have the gift, the spiritual gift of criticism, right? You're able to pick apart anything and everything. Maybe you've already found 15 reasons why this church service isn't good today, right? Or whatever. Uh, but you just, you're just bad about being critical of, of everything. Uh, maybe it's a complaining heart, right? Nothing's ever good enough for you. You just complain. It's never good enough. Uh, or maybe it's a gossiping tongue. Right? Whatever, whatever your thing is, define it based on who you want to become, what's one habit that you want to get rid of. Okay, You want, you want me to tell you what I've been working on? Would you like to know? Yeah. Okay, a couple people want to know. All right, so uh, we've been working on eating better, about better eating habits. And I'm just going to tell you, I have a bad sweet tooth. Right? This is confession time before you and God and everybody. Right, I have, I have a struggle with a sweet tooth. So every year after the, the big, our big Christmas Eve service, candlelight service, and all that Christmas stuff, we go on vacation. We go to a cabin in Arkansas with Andrea's parents. We meet up there. It's this beautiful cabin. And this past year, waiting for us at the cabin was all these delicious desserts. I'm talking pecan pie, pumpkin pie, apple pie, three different kinds of pie, y'all, three. <laughs> And the apple pie even had vanilla ice cream, Richard's like this. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. You know, get thee behind me, Satan, right? Pies, we had cookies, we had shortbread cookies, we had chocolate truffles, we had these gingerbread cupcakes with icing on them, we had stuff to make homemade uh, caramel corn. I'm talking desserts out the wazoo. And did I resist any of these? No, I did not. <laughs> I just dove in head first like kids at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like Augustus Gloob going into the Chocolate River and going up that tube. Like, I just dove in like, I'm, 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 give it to me. I don't care about my diet. I'm eating this. And it was good. And I did gain 10 pounds over Christmas break. No lie, 10 pounds. Uh, had some good eats, but uh, all right, now I got to work off this 10 pounds. So we're back on this diet that's similar to keto. It's not exactly keto, similar. But you know, I don't know if this diet really works because have y'all been to the Columbus Zoo and have you seen the manatees? Okay, all these guys eat is lettuce and they're huge. They're gigantic. 
All they eat is lettuce. Does keto really work? I'm not so sure about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I have lost five pounds back on our plan. Lost five out of the ten. Okay. Uh, but this raises an important question. Why is it good habits are so hard to start? And why is it bad habits are so hard to break? Right? Why is that? Well, this is an important question. We want to talk about this so that we can understand. Why is it good habits are hard to start? Well, the reason is because the pain is now and the payoff is later. Some of you may want to write that down. For example, let's say you decide you want to go jogging. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to go jogging. You buy yourself some new jogging shoes. You wake up that next morning to go jogging, and it is cold outside, baby, right? You're like, okay, I don't know. Was I, was I thinking crazy? It's too cold to jog, right? And then your legs start hurting, and your feet start hurting. And then you weigh yourself after a week of jogging, and you see there's not much difference in the scale, right? And you're like, man, this is discouraging, right? The pain is now. The payoff comes later, sometimes much later. And we're not patient to wait for that payoff that, that would come if we stayed on it. Uh, why is it bad habits are difficult to break? And get this, the, the answer is actually the reverse. You reverse them around. Uh, with bad habits, the payoff is now and the pain comes later, right? And so you eat that chocolate cake and that ice cream. Ooh, it's good. The payoff is now. The payoff is later when you go to the doctor and you get that report. And you're like, yeah, you got to cut down this. Your cholesterol is through the roof and whatever, right? But, but for me, I don't want to be a slave to this. I don't want to be a slave to this cycle that I seem to get stuck in. And, and I believe we can have victory in Jesus. Amen? And so based on who you want to come, become, what, what's one habit? Based on who you want to become, I want to be a godly man who's engaged with the people around me, not just engaged with the phone on Instagram. Like, I don't want my face stuck in Instagram. I want to actually talk to the people. Uh, I don't know, whatever it is, but what's one habit you need to break? Uh, and if you were with us last week, we talked about the habit cycle. Remember the habit cycle? So uh, at the top, oh, I just gave you the clue. What's the first part of the habit cycle? The cue. Okay, the whole habit thing starts with a cue. There's something, something you see or something that's said or you, you hear something that cues you to that thing. Okay, for you're driving by Krispy Kreme Donuts, and they put the red light on, meaning we got fresh donuts coming out right now. The red light is the cue. Whoa, hey, fresh donuts. Let's go. I just got cued. And so you stop, and, and then you give in, which is the, the, you have the craving. Okay, I saw the cue. I'm craving donuts. Now my response, I'm pulling into Krispy Kreme. I'm buying the donut. I'm eating the donut. And then the reward, I get a sugar high which starts the whole cycle again. Ooh, that felt good, that sugar high, I'm going to do it again, right? It creates this cycle. Um, and so there's always a cue. So if we want to break bad habits, go back to last week, if you didn't uh, see last week, how to start good habits. For this one, it's going to be slightly different, but similar. For breaking bad habits, we want to remove the cue. If I write that down, remove the cue, Okay. So we're going to remove the cue because we're always cued to do something, right? Your phone's always ding, bing, bong, 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 bing, bong, right? Going off. And it's like, what is that? Oh, and, and as soon as you hear that ding, you're like, oh, I got I to gotta know what that is. I got to find out what, what was the ding, right? It's a cue. It's a cue. And I turned off all my notifications except for text messaging. Like, I got sick of it. I'm like, I don't need to know. Every time someone posted something on Facebook, I don't need a ding for that. Anytime, every time someone sends me an email, I don't need a ding for that. And so I turn off all those, right? Sometimes just seeing the phone. All you have to do is see the phone. You're like, ooh, hey, I haven't been on this in a while, right? What, what's going on? I got to check out what's going on. We have this cue. And so we want to remove the cue. Proverbs 4, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 10 says, listen, my son, accept what I say. This is Solomon writing to his son. And the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Instruction. This, this is the key part. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it. And go on your way. So it's talking about removing the cue. Like, don't even get close to 
to that which would harm your relationship with God and your spiritual power. Don't, don't even get close to it, right? Don't set foot on the path of the wicked or in the way of evildoers, right? Now watch how direct Solomon is. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way, right? I mean, he says it like five different ways saying the same thing. Don't even go there. Remove the cue. Don't go there. And what I want to do is I want to show you the five most common cues so that you can recognize these and say, okay, how can I avoid these? How can I remove these cues? These triggers is another word for it. Trigger, right? It takes something that triggers, and all of a sudden you have that craving. The cue can also be called trigger. Five most common triggers or cues. Okay, the first one uh, is places. Okay, places. Now, you probably already know this. If you know yourself and you see patterns in yourself, you probably already know that certain places are triggers for you and you end up doing something you regret, yeah. right? Like you already know. Nobody has to tell you. Uh, maybe they do. I don't know. But, but you probably already know. Uh, it's a club, a casino, a bar, a party. It could be any of those or other ones, right? If there's certain places, how do we remove it? Just don't go there. Right? It's not worth it. Man, every time I go to XYZ place, I end up doing something I regret. Don't go there. Stop going to the place. The place is triggering you. Number two, times. Times of the day. You'll notice that you often generally do the wrong things at certain times of the day. For example, if you have a battle of looking at pornography, my guess is you don't look at that in the morning while you're doing your YouVersion Bible app. That's not when you do that, in the morning, right? No, it's usually probably late at night when you're tired, when you're mad about something, when you're worn out. That's when you're vulnerable and you give in, right? Times of the day. Um, number three is moods, moods. And HALT is the acronym, H-A-L-T, that people talk about when it comes to moods, which stands for this, hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. How many of you can relate to that? Like, oh yeah, that's, that is when I typically trip up, get tripped up, is I'm hungry, I'm angry, I'm lonely, I'm tired. It's when I'm in this mood that I do this thing that I don't want to do. Or maybe it's moments, number four, moments, right? It's certain moments that happen in your life that always seem to trigger. Like, after you flunk a test, you eat some dessert to console yourself. Or after you pass the test, you eat some dessert to celebrate, <laughs> Right? Like, either way, it doesn't really matter, but no. Um, uh, and then, and then, we have probably the biggest area that trips people up and tempts people away to do the wrong things, and that's people. People. Um, one of the strongest tempting factors is, you know, studies are conclusive that the closer you are to some people, the more you become like them. In fact, Jim Rohn, anybody ever... Listen, remember listening to Jim Rohn back in the day? He, was, he had some good stuff. One of the things he would say is, uh, you will become the average of the five people that you hang around the most. Right. You become like them. You start dressing like them, talking like them, doing the same things, going the same places, reading the same books, doing the same habits. Right? You become whoever you're, the five people that you hang out with the most. And the Bible has been warning us for, for centuries over that. Uh, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. I like how the New Century Version puts this. I memorized it in the NIV, but I liked when I found this. It says, do not be fooled. Bad friends will ruin good habits. It actually has the word habits in there. There were several translations. I always learned bad company corrupts good character or good morals, right? If you have someone who has good morals, good character, but you put them in bad, uh, bad influences, you'll become bad. Right? Bad company corrupts good character. But this one says, don't be fooled. Bad friends will ruin good habits. And then Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become what? Wise. Imagine that. You spend time with wise people, you're going to become more wise. That's how it works because people rub off on you for good or for bad. But a companion of fools suffers what? Oh. Harm. Yeah. So it's just who, who do you want to be around? What are the results you want? And so if you find yourself doing the wrong thing around a certain group of people, you might want to change out your closest friends. I'm just saying. Like, that would be the obvious conclusion, right? Um, hey, every time I get together with these people, I do this, and I don't want to do this. 
stop hanging around with those people. Get a new group of friends. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to watch these cues. We're going to look for these triggers. What are they? And then we're going to remove the cue. Whatever the trigger is, we're going to see if we can get it out of our lives. So I've been very open that uh, for eight years of my life, I was on drugs. And one of the best things, one of the best things God ever did, he's a genius. He knows what he's doing. You know, when you submit to God, he can lead you and get you in the right place. And so I, I prayed. I said, God, I have screwed up my life. Please save me. And got me off of drugs without any rehab. It was a miracle. Uh, God got me off of crystal meth. And then very quickly after, he called me to ministry. And so what I did is I went to Bible college. I moved an hour and a half away. That was the best thing I could have ever done. Because you know why? Because guess what I wasn't seeing anymore? Those same places, those houses, those clubs that I used to go to. None of those places. Guess what else I wasn't seeing? The people. I wasn't seeing all those people I used to run with that used to, you know, we, we all got each other messed up, right? Like, I wasn't seeing any of those. I was seeing new people. I was in a new environment. It was awesome. Glory to God, right? Praise God for what he did with me. He knew what I needed. Um, and so what we have is next steps, all right? We like to give an impact. We like to give next steps. How do you take this and apply it to your life? So this is based on what we talked about so far. First of all, maybe you want to turn off push notifications on your phone, right? It's just this huge distraction. You're trying to stay focused and work, but you're getting distracted every time your phone dings. Turn them off. It's not worth it. Um, identify your triggers. Okay, I just gave you the top five triggers. Identify what's yours, and then make a plan how to remove the cue, right? And then maybe some of you want to download apps that track your habits. Did you know there are, there are apps there's one called Habitify. You can see where the word habit is in there. Habitify. That actually tracks your habits. Another one called Fortify. For those who have more of a sexual temptation, you can download Fortify. It'll actually track your habits of when you tend to go towards those certain things and tell you these are the times of the day when you're vulnerable. You know, these are the things that are going on. It actually, it's use technology to your advantage. You know, there's, there's this cool tool out there. Might as well use it. All right, so the second thing we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is what? Remove the, remove the, the cue or the trigger. The second thing we want to do is interrupt the action. Interrupt the action. Uh, and so you may have something you're trying to stop. The best example I can think of was, okay, you, let's say you want to get up, you want to attack the day, you want to be productive this day, but you know you have a bad habit of hitting the snooze button 73 times, right? <laughs> What do you do? You interrupt the action. Okay, what's the problem? Your, the problem is you got the phone or your clock right next to your head, so all you got to do is go, boop, snooze, move it across the room to where you have to get up and walk over to it. So what have you done? You interrupted the action you normally do. You changed it up. You interrupted the action. If you're one of those people that overspends on, on Amazon, you know how good they are at you find one thing in your cart, and all of a sudden they're suggesting, oh, what about this? And don't you need this? And boop, 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 boop. And all of a sudden your cart's 10 carts, 10 things in your cart. How do I get from 1 to 10? Uh, you could actually share your password with a friend, and you have to run it by them before you can buy whatever, right? Like you're interrupting the action. You, you created some kind of interruption there. Uh, for those of you who battle pornography on your phone, you can limit the adult content. Okay, there are all kinds of apps out there. Um, there's one called Covenant Eyes. There's one called Bark that a lot of parents use for teenagers that, that can block adult content and also other kind of content. You can block out whatever. Like You can tell it exactly what you want blocked. You can actually block from downloading new apps. Like If you know that yeah. I'm, I'm going to be tempted to download a, a different app because I couldn't get it this way, so I'm going to download. You can actually block from, from downloading any app to where you have to have approval. Uh, you can actually do, there's a program where you can have a friend do that for you. They can like, uh, it's like password protected or anyway, um, interrupt the action. You can get rid of social media. If you realize, man, I, this is consuming my life. I'm just like, my life is social media. That's like all I do. And you realize that. Get rid of the app. Get rid of the social media, right? And listen, if you can't use one of these smartphones without looking at something inappropriate, Maybe it's time to get a dumb phone, like for real, like for real, right? You can get a dumb phone that can't get on the internet. If that's your struggle, do that. 
if you need to do that. Um, so I, I want to just pause for a minute. And I want to go a little deeper because for some of you, there's a more dangerous habitual activity that you've been struggling with. more, And, and it's going to take more severe measures than just blocking something on your phone. Okay, uh, if you're addicted to gambling or drug addiction or alcohol addiction, uh, ongoing sexual addiction, you may need to totally remove the cue and totally interrupt the process and go to rehab. And listen, going to rehab is not a sign of weakness. If anything, it's a sign of wisdom. It's always a sign of wisdom. If you need to take that step, do that. And, and we would support you in that. All right, last, last little part. I want to talk about the reward. Um, I, I wrote this message, and I was like, you know, there's only a, I really want to get this reward in there, and I only had a little bit of space left, but I think it's important. So it's called rewarding yourself for not doing the bad habit, or you can reward for doing a good habit. But um, ultimately, the, the ultimate goal is enough motivation for us. Like, if your goal is to lose weight, I want to lose 30 pounds, Okay. Hopefully, you know, ideally that 30, 30 pounds is enough for you to motivate you. But the reality is that's probably going to take a while, right? If you're just being real, that's probably going to take a while. And so we need more immediate rewards that we can do along the way. Like if we just wait till here, we may not make it to here. So you give yourself little rewards, not rewarding with food if you're trying to get away with food, right? Reward yourself by getting your nails done or, or something, right? Like what, whatever that would be for you. But you need little rewards along the way. So the Bible talks about rewards. James 1, 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the what? Is it up there? Where is that? That person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised. What's that? That's a reward, right? God is saying, if you will hang in there, I got a reward for you. Revelation 22, 12, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they've done. So Jesus used reward. Again, in Mark 10, 28, then Peter spoke up. We have, we have left everything to follow you, Peter said. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and for the gospel, the good news, will fail to receive a hundred times as much in the present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions. And in the age to come, what's the reward you're going to get? Eternal life. Eternal life. And so God used rewards. Jesus used rewards, right? That's what we're talking about. And so uh, we were talking to a counselor about our, our youngest and how can we get him to obey better. And she actually gave us an assignment and said, come up with some kind of reward for obeying. And so what we came up with was a quarter, giving him a quarter for every time he obeyed without complaining, if he obeyed immediately and without complaining, boom. Now, we're not going to do that till he's 35, you know. It's just till we can get the habit going, you see. Use some kind of reward so you can get that habit in place. Um, so that's, that's an example. I knew a guy who quit smoking, and he took all the money that he was spending per week and he put it in a savings account and he ended up buying himself a brand new car eventually with it. <laughs> That's a lot of smoking. <laughs> That's a lot of cartons. Um, you know, I used to smoke. He, he must have been smoking a lot. But, uh, but anyway, not only was the car a reward, but also just as, as you see your savings building up, that would be a reward, right? Over time, you're just like, wow, this is cool. I didn't know I was spending this much a week on cigarettes or, you know, a month or whatever. Um, but figure out some kind of reward. So that's the last next step is figure out a reward that you can give yourself. If that's you, if you want to do that, just check that off. Okay. Um, so my prayer is that your eternal reward would be enough to motivate you, right? Like when we think about our eternal des destination. And, and the reality is we're all going one of two places when we die. When we leave this earth, our body dies, but our spirit lives on in one of two places. You know what they are, heaven and hell, right? The Bible teaches that as fact, as reality. I don't know about you. I want to be in heaven. Anybody else want to be in heaven with me? Nobody got excited there. for Like I was hoping for a little more. Like I want to be in heaven. I definitely don't want to go to hell. 
where it's horrible and torment and worse than we could possibly imagine. Right? Like, I want to be with God. I want to be with Jesus who saved me. Uh, I want to be where things are good. And so, but not just, not just in the future. I believe our, be- our life is better in this life with God on our side. Does anybody else believe that? That this life is better with God in it. That he helps us, that he guides us. Man, I, I don't want to do life without the Holy Spirit guiding me and helping me with decisions and providing for my needs and, and helping me resist temptation. Like, I don't want to do life without that help with God on my side. And so in this life and the next life, uh, I don't want to do anything that would put my soul in jeopardy. And, and I've talked to some of you about this before, about when I was on that eight-year path of not living for God, of being in rebellion to God, I some nights I would lie awake and I would think to myself, man, if Jesus came back right now, I don't think I'd be going with him. And it scared me. I mean, I didn't do anything about it right then, but over time, eventually, it was like, it did. You know, I was like, I, I want to go with Jesus. I got to get right. And maybe that's some of you this morning in this room, like, man, where are you going when you die? That's, that's a fair question. Uh, and don't you want God's help in this life? Because I'm going to tell you, this, this breaking habit stuff that we're talking about, you're, ne- you're never going to do it without God's help. I mean, you can, just, you can just throw it out the window, like, forget about it. Without God's power and God's help, you're not going to do it. You, you've got to have God's help. And so if you want that, we give this time that we call an invitation. We invite you to give your life to God. You know, if for the first time, or maybe you need to come back and rededicate your life to God, like, yeah, I was that eight-year, you know, time, and, and I need to get back with God and, you know, get right with Him. And if that's you, we... So this is what we encourage you to do. We're going to sing, the band's going to sing a song, and I'm going to go to the back. And if that's you, I want you to come to me and just say, hey, I want to get right with God. Like, what do I got to do? I, I, I got to put my faith in Jesus. I got to believe he died on the cross for my sins. Like, what do I need to do? How do I change my life? The Bible calls that repenting. It's, it's a change. It's a turning, turning away from doing one thing and doing something else. Like, is it baptism? Do I need to be baptized? Like, what do I need to do? And I'll help you with that, right? Uh, if you want to rededicate your life, usually how we do that is you just come to me and I say, okay, I got it. Can I pray for you? And just, we'll pray together and help you rededicate your life to Christ and start fresh today. And that's what I love about God. He always is willing to give you fresh starts. Over and over again, he'll do that. I mean, you don't want to take advantage of that and be like, oh, he's always going to forgive me, so I'll just do whatever I want. Not that. Don't misunderstand me. But he is a God of fresh chances. And so we're all going to stand. Okay, would you stand up with us? And if that's you and you need to come to the back, if you're going through a difficult time and you're like, man, my life is falling apart and I need prayer, right? Like some of you may have come in here with a heavy heart and you're like, I got financial difficulties. I got relationship troubles. I got, I got all kinds of things going on. I would love to pray for you. Come to the back and let me just pray for you confidentially. Nobody else needs to know what's going on in your life. All right, I'll pray for you. But whatever it is, would you please come to the back as the band.